Uh, ow. What's going on, everybody? Uh, time to play some more Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time. Sorry about starting like 30 minutes late. Uh, I still have some family over and I can it start sooner. And don't be surprised if I suddenly have to pause the game and do something because I'm still here. But let's get started. Alright, so, alright, we left off during rush hour, I still gotta beat this level. I believe I do know all the locations of the crates, I just have to not die, that's the major issue. Well, if I can beat the level without dying, we will be good. Let me move them, stop over a little bit. Let me adjust the volume on my headset. Alright, so what I need to do is memorize the pattern for the cars and make sure not to get hit by the cars. Hmm. Let's see if these tall poppies know how to smoke a steak. Make sure I don't over jump that platform because I remember always constantly over jumping that one. Scoop back a little bit. Not to think about that. Dang it. The nitro crate jumped up, so it put itself in in the path. <laughs> I don't think I, if it didn't jump up at that moment, it, it would not have gotten sucked up. You know, sometimes those nitro crates had the perfect timing to jump into you. And then you're like, dang it. Sometimes it's probably a lot safer just to wait for the nitro crate to jump and then to move. Let's see if these tall poppies know how to smoke a steak. I think that's sad about this though, is this is the last Dinga Doll and Tana level. So once I get the insanely perfect relic for this and the inverted thing, I don't think I ever have to place these two again. You know, except for when I've ever be played a game like off stream. So I'm pretty sure I will replay this game, but this is definitely my favorite Crash Bandicoot game. Very fun. Ow. 
guess I'm too close for the TNT. Okay, there we go. That is, <laughs> that's so weird. It's like the the Aqua Great wanted to come to me, but it didn't, and it just teleported over to me. Like what? Like, it really just teleported all the way over to me. You know, I'm just going to jump on it. I don't know. I could have sworn when I was playing this yesterday, I was getting the Aku without having to uh, jump. Or am, I, or am I thinking of the other crate, the, the life crate? Yeah, that one was probably the one that... I could have sworn I didn't have to jump. But maybe I do. Maybe my game's changing its mechanics on me mid playing the game. <laughs> hmm. Let's see if these tall poppies know how to smoke a steak. This time I'm just gonna jump on the crate. <laughs> I really should not be dying here. This part is so easy and I'm I'm dying. I'm just gonna blame this on being rusty. Even though I shouldn't be that rusty. Last time I played this was Saturday. Saturday. See, I need to begin to ton a section because that's the section I need to practice. Well, not practice, but that's the section I need to worry about. Because you've got like barely any time to react to the car speeding across the airway. I was going to say highway, but it's like it's in the air. So airway, <laughs> whatever you would call that in the future. The airway, yes, uh, the skull of airway. <laughs> Let's see if these tall poppies know how to smoke a steak. What's up, Avalon? How are you doing today? You got work today, Avalon, or you're free today? Ah, I missed. You're free? Oh cool, then you will see what I think is probably the best inverted level. Just as long as I can get the imperfect relic on the 
I mean, the insanely perfect relic on this level. Does this mean I have franchise potential? Now I have work till Could Friday night. Nice. I'm off today. I mean, not today. I'm off, um... What is it? Tomorrow and Friday. But I work in the morning, so... That's why I'm live only live stream at night. Oh, that was close. Sadly though, I think this is the last thing about level in the game. So once I get the insanely perfect relic, um I don't think there's any more gameplay for Dingadal or Tana. But at least they made a very hard level to go out with them. Oh, I'm not oh, barely barely made that. <laughs> Stay away from me! I eat my franchise because I saw my future. Oh wait, <laughs> that was close. It's all right. I got an Aku. Yeah. Now what? Y'all afraid of me? I can stare you right in the eye. Y'all not gonna do nothing. Nothing. Then get the stupid Nitro Crate jumped into me. Oh, it's alright. Nothing should be able to hurt me from this point forward. Well, unless I get killed by this robot. Oh my gosh, how did I miss the spin attack? How did I miss the spin attack? My depth perception was completely off with that enemy. I thought I was next to him, but I guess not. It's all right. I just started the live stream like 17 minutes ago. I got I got to get the the easy deaths out of the way. This is a hard level though. <laughs> These future levels are very hard. <laughs> All right, people over here trying to say stormy what was it? Stormy Ascent was hard? No, no. The level, these levels are all way harder than that. <laughs> Stormy Ascent is easy. <laughs> Let's see if these tall poppies know how to smoke a steak. Uh, I, okay, I guess. <laughs> I, I guess it, my positioning was wrong. I, I thought I was going to get the TNT, but I guess not. I 
I have I think I have to be slightly more to the left. I just wish the, the, the game didn't take forever to load the level. Like, in the originals, if you died and restart the level, well, at least in time trial mode, it resets the whole level. So, actually, no, even in this game, if you die in time trial mode, it resets the whole level quickly. So, I wonder why. Let's see if <laughs> and you gotta reset the level, it takes forever to reset it if you're not in time trial mode. I wonder why it just auto corrects to the left right there. Cause I'd be trying to shoot the one on the right and I never can cause it just auto corrects to the left for some reason. Yeah, I wanted to spin that enemy at first, but then when I realized it was gonna <laughs> blow up the nitro crate while it was next to me, I was like, yeah, let me just jump off of them normally. Does this mean I have franchise potential? Am I a franchise? Could I open a restaurant in an airport? The hardest character to play as? That would be, without a doubt, Dr. Cortex. <laughs> his, his platforming is so different from everyone else's. And I'm pretty sure I've gotten the most deaths with Cortex. <laughs> and then who is my least favorite character? Uh, that's not a thing. Uh, I lo love playing as every character. Every character is fun to play as to me. I mean, if I have to say favorites, of course, that's Crash Bandicoot and Coco. But that's, like, you know, the base Crash Bandicoot gameplay. But I do enjoy playing these other levels where I get to use these other characters. Well, unless you count Polar. Because, I mean, I already beat the level before they patched it. But like, if you played the level before they did the patch, uh, Polar has a very hard time breaking crates because his hitbox is like ridiculously small for like no reason. And so like, even though you'd be lined up with the crates, you'll just miss them for no reason. And that level was like very hard to beat. Because of that, so it... Maybe put the, that one polar level, if you count that, polar would be my least favorite character to play as. But not because like I hate polar, just because the programmers poorly implemented his hitbox. But they fixed that in a recent update, which is a little too late because I already beat that level before they did the update. So like it, that update doesn't affect me at all, except for maybe time trial whenever I get around to those. Where are all of the things that are supposed to kill me? <laughs> You're supposed to be chasing me with nitro crates and I don't see any of them. Like, I see them up there. Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, there they are. 
Now they pop up and I've accidentally put myself in a bad position. They actually try to pull it after the update. No, but um... You know, the update was to fix Polar and I think some glitches or something. But I already beat the... What? I wasn't even looking at the Nitro Crate. <laughs> okay. I literally was not looking at the Nitro Crate and it just jumped over towards me. Like, what was that? Oh, um, no, I didn't play Polar after update because there's like no point in doing it when I already beat the level before they did the update. Like, I'm pretty sure Polar's hitbox is better, but it's like, it's like, why would I go back and play it? I already beat the level. I'm trying to continue on and beat the stuff I haven't yet. But I, I'm low-key a little upset that Nitro Crate just blew me up because I was literally nowhere near it and I was nowhere near pointing at the Nitro Crate. And it just decided to jump all the way over and kill me. Like, what? I was quite literally facing forward. Nitro Crate was all the way to the right. <laughs> what about the alien thing? It, the thing about the alien was its hitbox... I'm pretty sure his hitbox was pretty bad as well, but it wasn't as noticeable because all the crates were like basically single line lined up on top of each other. Cause like the problem with Polar is that they had like two up by two crates, and so since I think Coco or Crash's hitbox is bigger than Polar's for some reason, you could break the top two crates by going down the middle. But sometimes the oh wait hold on all right. You could break the top two crates by going down the middle, but sometimes because Polar's hitbox is so small, you would just miss the bottom one for no reason, even though you're perfectly lined up. And Polar's level had a lot of 2x2 two two crates and made the level so annoying to beat because of that. Whereas the Alien's level has like 1x2 crates, and so you don't really miss it that easily. So you wouldn't really notice as bad as Polar's level. But um, I believe I played the alien level after the update though, so that did make it easier. Especially that one part with the four crates that were lined up. Does this mean I have franchise potential? Could I open a restaurant? In an oh, I need to get past Dingadile's section. <laughs> Yesterday I was doing a good job of getting past Dingadile's section, but now I'm just dying on it. Imagine that clank vibes from this level. Yeah. Doesn't help that I have a gun too. <laughs> well, a suction gun. Actually, no, Ratchet and Clank has a suction gun too. Yeah, this is definitely <laughs> Ratchet and Clank. <laughs> Alright, now let's hope I can get past this section this time. Wait, hope? No, nah, that's not the word I want to use. I will get past this section this time. Do 
Did I get it? Aw. Uh, I was hoping I could snipe those Nitro crates. Oh no. Don't. No. Stay away. Alright. Now I froze them in time. Now I wonder if it's intentional for them to uh, be frozen like this. Or is this is a glitch? I don't know, but whatever it is, I'm going to use it to my advantage. This is a good car. There we go. All right. Now we can move on Wonder to the next part. What the part. local delicacy is here? I hope it's spicy and fried. There we go, now it's lined up. Okay, I just gotta remember just to wait until I see the button icon and I should be good on the grinding sections. Is there anything on the left? No, there is not. Yeah, the grinding section is all about just waiting for the icon to pop up and then pressing R2. Don't try to guess it, just wait for the button to pop up. <laughs> I, to this day, I never understand why this stupid thing is standing in front of a bunch of TNTs. Like it's asking to be destroyed. Okay, now for the hard part. Not getting hit, uh, ran over. Yo, did I break the crate? Let's go. Just wait for you till you see the car. No, why did it? The what? No, the button popped up. <sighs> I don't know why the button like disappeared. Like I pressed it right when it popped up, and it just disappeared on me. Man. That sucks. Like, I swear I saw the icon pop up to press R2 and I pressed it and it didn't work. And so then I got killed by the car. Like, that's the hardest part of Tarnus level, just not getting killed by the, the cars that come by so fast that you got barely any time to react. That and trying to break the crates while jumping on the cars. Hmm. 
Let's see if these tall poppies know how to smoke a steak. No, I don't have the TV on in the background. My door is closed, and that's the people in the living room who, for some reason, always gotta blast the TV at maximum volume. So yeah, you can hear that, even though my door is closed. And there's not really much else I can do about it. Oh gosh, I forgot to blow you up. Oh, you got nothing to apologize for, Avalon. It's not your fault. It's just a living situation I'm, I'm in. Am I a franchise? Could I open a restaurant? In an airport? Ah, dang it, I overshot him. Now I don't have an extra Aku for the Nitro Crate suicidal bomb on robot thingies. Wait, do you plan on beating all three of those games in one night? <laughs> yeah, the way you said it, like I'm drinking, you're drinking coffee to beat those games, is make it sound like you're gonna try, you're gonna beat them all in one night, all three of the Sly Cooper games. Oh, that's alright. It didn't read my jump. Good thing Dingadal can float. I keep my franchise because I stole my future franchise. Oh, bollocks, my head hurts. Come on. Where are you? Good vehicle that I could use. Yeah, I think I basically got Dingadal section down now. Wonder what the local delicacy is here. I hope it's spicy. But this I'm has got to be the most dangerous food run you ever had to do in my life. Can't believe we're doing all of this just to get some food. 
You would think it would be easier to get food in the future, but no, there's a bunch of killer enemies everywhere. Oh, come on! It didn't touch me! Uh. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I just read through all that and just see you just say it. it's the hardest because of the pirate ship level. <laughs> yeah, uh. Trust me, I know. And that, and every game I play, if there's a level with pirates, that is by far the hardest level in the game for no reason. Like I don't know what it is with developers, but I swear, if they have pirates, they make it their goal to make that level insanely hard. Doesn't matter what game. <laughs> pirates, for some reason, just are the toughest enemies in video games. Or pirate ships. If there's a pirate ship, it's going to be the hardest level in the game. <laughs> Let's see if these tall poppies know how to smoke a steak. Now the worst nightmare of a level would be like a, a lava level. Uh, the, <clears throat> a lava level with pirates and it's also an ice level now that right there would be by far one of the hardest levels in video games lava and ice working together to destroy you along with pirates and the pirate ships <clears throat> probably some ghosts too Oh my goodness. You gotta be very precise with those enemies. You're off by like a couple of pixels and you get electrocuted. Well, uh, the Sly Cooper games came out on PlayStation 2, right? I would think you could be able to beat all of them in a day. Well, maybe two days. Because PlayStation 2 games, for the most part, you could beat in one day. In less than a day, really. For most PlayStation 2 games. If you know how the game works and stuff. It's until you get to the generation afterwards where it might take longer to beat games. Because they start expanding down the games and making them longer. Assuming that you're good at the game and you don't die a lot. Because the old games definitely, old video games are definitely harder. So, it might take someone that's not skilled at games a longer time to beat them. There we go, finally blue belts ones up.
You have to sell your ship and fight three other ships. All of them against you. Can I please pick up? Thank you. <laughs> it's like it's right in front of me. Why can't I pick it up? It's not to think about that. Did I get the other one? I think I got the other one. Let's go. Dang it. Does this mean I have franchise potential? Could I open a restaurant in an airport? Uh, so you have to deal with multitasking. Pretty interesting mission. I wasn't confident that the ship was gonna come out. That was bad on my part. <sighs> Gosh, these, la these levels in this future area are probably going to take me multiple streams to beat. Actually, no, there's only two levels, huh? No, there's only three levels in this area. <laughs> oh, man, I don't know. Oh, the one after this? And then I have to do that one section to crash the crates and the, fall the falling luggage? Oh, man, I don't know if I'm going to beat these in today's stream. Today's stream is going to be a tough one. <laughs> and they're going to get harder from here because these are the hardest levels in the game. So, And then the last level, oh my goodness, I don't know how I'm going to beat that without dying once. This just reminds me of when I was trying to beat Sonic Heroes Super Hard Mode without dying once. Hmm. Let's see if these tall poppies know how to smoke a steak. And I got to Final Fortress, and then I died. And then I don't think I ever played again. I could do it. I know I can. I have beaten each level individually without dying. I just gotta do it just in one session now. But it's probably been more than a year since I played Sonic Heroes now. Almost more than a year. Missions that are hard. I mean, wouldn't it, collecting all the hidden bottles and stuff technically be the game, so that makes it hard? <laughs> he said it's not the game that's hard, it's collecting all the hidden bottles, but like that is a part of the game, so doesn't that mean the game is hard? Ooh, and don't take a hit or no restoring health. I like missions like those, and I gotta play perfect. Timed missions, eh, they're not my favorite, they're not really that fun, because it's more like, the thing I don't like about, so any type of mission or something in the game that requires you to be like perfect and not get hit and stuff, or to collect everything, I love those missions in games, it, you know, feels like you're playing perfectly, but like missions where you're like on, on the clock, and you have to get through something quickly, I just don't like. Not that it's like particularly hard or anything. It's just that like you you don't get to explore the level and stuff. Because you're just trying to rush through it. And you basically ignore all the effort that the developers put into the game. <laughs> just because you have to beat the level super quickly. So I never really liked timed levels or anything. It's just 
not as fun as like a regular level where you just have to find everything. Or a level where you have to beat it without get taking, getting hit. Like those are fun because you know, you still get to go at a pace that lets you explore the whole level. But you just have to do so flawlessly, which is like, yeah, pretty fun. But timed missions is like, nah, forget, you know, getting to see the level and stuff. Just run and rush through everything. Does this mean I have franchise potential? Ah, uh, too close to blow it up. Could I open a restaurant in an airport? Instead of opening a restaurant in the airport, why not open a restaurant in the underwater future city? Hmm? Hmm? No, I wonder how many other people play Crash Bandicoot using the directional buttons like I do. <laughs> I'm pretty sure a ton of people probably just use the analog stick because like most new games require the analog stick. But if you ask me, I always felt like the, the directional buttons are way more accurate and precise than the analog stick. The directional buttons you always have like, like if you were to press up, you always have the same up input. And you can like, you know, pixel perfectly move to the left and right. Whereas the analog stick, because of, you know, how much you can like tilt it, that can affect uh, your walking speed and minuscule things. So I always feel like the directional button is just way more precise and always consistent. Well, maybe not as precise, but always consistent, and I like being more consistent. They don't have an underwater future city in this game. Hmm. Ooh, let's go, I blew him up. Oh gosh. I saw my they almost blew me up. Oh, bullocks, my head hurts. Wait, does Akko carry over to Tana? That's an important question. Better beans on what? Wonder what the local delicacy is here. What you don't carry Aku? And Man, that sucks. 
So I guess that means me getting hit in that last section on Nitro Case actually does not matter because I don't get to carry it off to. Ooh, nice, got a two for one. a joystick for ultimate hard mode <laughs> I mean it won't be ultimate hard mode it just be like playing crash twin sanity <laughs> that's when I started using the analog stick but when they went back to um insane trilogy I was like you know I'm gonna go back to the directional buttons because it's just my platforming is way more precise with the directional buttons people screaming out there. Did I, get, did I break the crate? Let's go. Okay, so I want to break the crate before I go out there. Well, now I'll wait for the car. Alright, and now I'll use this. And let's go. Okay, I think I got just one more hard section left. I apologize for any background noise you hear. Okay, gotta blow up these TNTs. It should be good from here. Man. The security they got over here. Guys, why are they screaming out there like they're getting killed? <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm better lined up with the crates. I wasn't lined up with the crates earlier. Wait, they just... I just realized they just now give you an Aku. <laughs> out of all that stuff. Wait, I don't even think Aku can even protect you from anything on this level. But I'm pretty sure the cars are insta-kills regardless if you have Aku or not. Yeah, what does Aqua protect you from? <laughs> the trash bins? Is there a crate out here I gotta break? I don't remember. And I hope there's not. Oh, and I gotta remember there's two cars here. There is a crate I gotta break. Dang it. No. Oh my goodness. Guys, this section is so flippin' hard. But I gotta, you know, stay on the. <sighs> now, I completely forgot I can use this to extend my jump time. And I can use that to my advantage. I could jump a lot farther than I think I can. Okay, so I got uh, just a crate there. I gotta work, and I gotta worry about all these stupid cars trying to kill me. Is there another crate? 
I don't think there's any other crates I have to worry about. Yeah, so that's the only crate I have to worry mm, about, because after that... Fried mystery food. Gosh, why are they running out here screaming like crazy maniacs? And he's... And one, and one of them is like... Thir wait. 29. That's a 29 year old, everybody. Hi. Man, I wish I had a way to just completely cut out their sound. Hmm. What's going on out there? I I, I don't know and I don't want to check. Hold on, let me see if I could like put my jacket underneath the doorway. Maybe that can muffle the sound a little bit. Put a jacket underneath. I stuffed the jacket as much as I could underneath the doorway. It might reduce the sound maybe like a little bit. But with them literally yelling right outside my door, I'm not sure there's anything I can do about that. <laughs> see, see, now my focus is gone. Yes, that's exactly Avalon, 29 year old. Oh, little girl. <laughs> that's exactly what's going on. Why are they making screaming like that? I don't know. Or why are they running outside in the hallway, right outside my door, and not like literally anywhere else in the house, like the living room or the kitchen? Or outside. Well, then again, it is dark outside, so never mind on that part. But anyway, I need to refocus my mind because I'm I'm so close to getting the perfect relic on this level. Let's see if these tall poppies know how to smoke a steak. Yeah, I got Dinga Doll's level down. It's just Tana's part. I need to get better at avoiding the vehicles and not falling off. Maybe they know I'm, str I'm streaming. They want the 15 minutes of frame. Fame. I mean, like. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm not sure how much fame they, they're gonna get. I only got like three or four viewers, so. <laughs> Unless all of a sudden I just get like 50 viewers out of nowhere. I don't, I'm not sure how much fame, fame they're gonna be getting from going around in the background scheming. Maybe if I change the title to people screaming in the background, I get a ton of views. Does this mean I have franchise potential? Yeah. 
Am I a franchise? Could I open a restaurant? In an airport? Thing is, um, <laughs> it's funny, like how when I, I keep uh, thinking I should have no problem to be uh, getting it past like most of this level, but then I, when I sit here and have to really think about what I'm doing, this level is so complicated, and the, the amount of spacing you need to make sure you perfectly land on things and not fall, and there's a platform right there that I did not know was right there, and it just saved my life. <laughs> like there's a platform right there. Huh. Cause I'm over here playing like, oh, getting insanely perfect relic is just something I could do. But then I seem to forget that I'm a, sometimes I forget I'm a very advanced video game player. And like the average person probably would never even hope of getting the insanely perfect relic, especially in any of these later levels. Did I get him? I don't know if I got him. I got him, let's go. And I got that crate that had Aku in it. I was not supposed to blow that up. Oh wait, I forgot that falls. How could I forget that falls? Oh my gosh, Avalon. I'm not repeating that. <laughs> but, um... Um... Yeah, like, I... I I'll, see, like, the minuscule things, like, right there... I simply forgot just for like a nanosecond that those things fall and then I immediately died. <laughs> and it's like, you know, most, I forget that I'm very advanced video game player, so like all that stuff just goes on in my mind without me even thinking about it. And then I forget that like other people playing it struggle a lot. Cause like for example, um, back in, uh, what was it? The second world with where engines at, I'm over here, you know, beating the levels, you know, dying less than three times or, one of the levels I died like seven times, you know, I'm thinking like, oh yeah, these levels, you know, kind of easy. And then I have one of my friends come over and play Crash Bandicoot, and then they're dying like 20 times and stuff, and I'm like, dang. I forgot how good, I, sometimes I forget how good I, I am at games. And I'm always saying like, dang, sometimes I wish games were harder because they're too easy, but like, I forget it's because sometimes the game is, well, actually the games have gotten easier over time. But it's not 100% that the games just are easier. I, I've improved a lot in video games ever since, you know, I was little. And so, a majority of newer games are easy now. Whereas to other people, they're probably like still very challenging. Not to think about that. But yeah, it makes me happy though when I play a game like this that oh I almost died. Does this mean Your spacing for these electric trampoline things gotta be so precise. So all it takes is just to be slightly off and that's your whole life. You got only one hit point unless you find the Aku, which you get only two then. Could I open a restaurant? In an airport? Yeah, when you think about it, Crash Bandicoot is a pretty hard platforming game because it actually does not give you hit points. <laughs> like, you actually basically can't get hit because Akus are very rare and then they don't appear until you've basically died like a ton of times in the same section. It's kind of cool though. Crash Bandicoot has like a different way of of difficulty curve 
So instead of like, you know, just keeping the same difficulty, well, it keeps the same difficulty and doesn't make it easier for anybody. But what it does is if you die a certain amount of times, um, Aku starts appearing. So it gives you one extra hit point. And sometimes that one extra hit point is what someone might need to beat the level. And then I think it will, after that, it will move, I'm not sure if it did that in the old games, I don't think the old games ever move checkpoints, but in new games if you continue dying after a certain point they will move the checkpoint closer to help you get past a certain section. And then if you continue dying more after that then it gives you the gold Aku so you have three hit points. So it's kind of cool, it's like it's own self correcting difficulty system that automatically uh, lowers the difficulty depending on how many times you die. Because sometimes it's not really like the person can't beat this section, it's like they just need one more hit point and they can beat it. But then sometimes Aku literally can't, doesn't help at all <laughs> because like he can't protect you from falling and some, pe some of these sections most of the time I'm dying because I'm falling. This section though, I definitely need Aku though. <laughs> but this is a ridiculous amount of nitro crates. Man, where is the good vehicle? All these other vehicles are trash. They can't even hold a dingo doll. Uh, it doesn't matter, it's not like these hit points carry over to Tana anyway. delicacy is here. I hope it's spicy and fried. Hey, let what Tana was doing be a lesson. Don't forget to do your stretches. Oh, I almost died. Not stretching almost every day, your body can start feeling some pain. I don't know how I completely missed the trash can and hit the TNTs. I was hoping to disable the trash can so it wouldn't spin so I could kick into the TNTs. I feel like the hidden gem in the uh, inverted level is 
probably gonna be on the grinding section. Did I get it? Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna just make sure I try to break in a crate before I try platforming. Okay, see the vehicle. Vehicle should be coming. Now go. And the secret of jumping over these vehicles is just to wait until the front part of your body is like right over the vehicle. And then jump. Yeah, they don't give you an Aku Patan until all the way back here. Which, which at this point, Aku is literally useless because there's no enemies that can hurt you. <laughs> like, anything that can hurt you from this point forward is an insta kill, so what's the point of there being an Aku here? <laughs> the cards are insta kills. Oh my, why do you want me to yell, Rob? <laughs> Wait, can I get the Aku from here? I know the Aku's around here. If I could get it from here, that would be great, so I don't have to worry about breaking it. I don't think I can, though. <sighs> Which means I gotta do it the hard way. Vehicle 1. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's... This section is so hard. Wait, can I jump on these? Oh my gosh. This entire time I've been operating with the mindset that this falls. Because quite literally in Dingadal's section, every one of these fall when you jump on it. And so this entire time I thought I could only jump on this one. And so I've been limiting my what I can do because of that. But this entire time, I could have just been like, okay, let me jump on this. Now the timing's way better, and I could come up here. Like, oh my. So I, I guess the only reason the cars are, only reason the cars are falling is because Dingadal is thick. That's the only reason the cars are falling. <laughs> oh man, this entire time I've been operating thinking I that those cars were falling a certain amount of time so I was just going for the gray ones because they were safer but Tana doesn't make the cars fall it's just ding -a doll oh my goodness that, that just opens up so much opportunity now this entire time I was limiting myself and I was like dude this timing is kind of very strict because the other vehicles just fall but it's like no actually you can jump on any one of them Tana isn't as heavy as Dingadal. Okay. Now that I know I can jump on any vehicle, I probably have a better chance of beating Tana's section now. <laughs> Let's see if these tall poppies know how to smoke a steak. And this is precisely why I don't play heavyweights in video games. <laughs> they always... There's always something that makes it uh, harder for them that like lightweight characters as you know could do easily. Not that I have anything against Dingadal, but he is pretty heavy in this game.
behind me. Best not to think about that. Does this mean I have franchise potential? Well, on the bright side, at least I haven't purposely tried to pick up any nitro crates with the suction gun. <laughs> or vacuum gun, whatever it's called. Because I have totally done that before in the past. Gosh, I've been stuck on this level for like an hour. Actually, more than an hour. I might be stuck on this level for an hour and a half. Yeah, I've been live streaming for like an uh, hour and 20 minutes. That means this level is putting a number on me. Which makes sense, because I'm pretty sure it took me quite some time. No, Aku! But I do remember I died like probably 20 something times on this level when I first played it. Or was it 30 something? I don't remember. Now, I wonder if I should live stream Crash Bandicoot on Friday. Just so I could just be playing it more. Because I'm only playing it like two times a week. And that's probably affecting how fast I can beat these levels. Like, if I played it a lot more, I'd probably be a lot more cons uh, precise with my movements and stuff. Yeah, I might just move my live streams of Crash Bandicoot to three instead of um, two. Especially since the, the last level is going to be a nightmare there. How did I not pick up the TNT that's right next to me, but I pick up the Nitro Crate that's a... <laughs> Great, now I have to do all of this without getting hit. Franchise because I sold my future franchise. Oh, bullets, my head hurts. Why doesn't it feel that long? Because you've been having fun. I don't know. Or maybe you're grinding on a video game or something. Okay, I hope I don't get hit by any nitro crates. I'm about to stay as close to the bottom as I can. Okay, good. But then again, Avalon, did you join at the beginning of the stream? I feel like you may have joined like 10, 15 minutes late. So you, or did you? I don't know. Where am I going? No, it's not the vehicle you want to jump on. At least not until I'm Tana. Wonder what the local delicacy is here. I hope it's spicy and fried. Okay, so now that I realize that Tana is not as thick as Dingadal and can actually jump on vehicles without breaking them down, I should have a better chance of beating this.
Okay, sorry about that. Uh, what about Sai? Right, okay. On the bright side, actually, I'm gonna shut up. I'm not John Jinx myself. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> kicked him into the TNT. I was gonna say something. I'm not gonna say it because I felt like I would get killed by it as soon as I say it. I can consistently get past that part now. It's just the second part. Well, I don't need to consistently get past the second part. I just have to get past the second vehicle part once. <laughs> Okay, now that I got past it and can't jinx myself, I was gonna say, um, at least on the bright side, I have not got killed on the grinding section once yet. <laughs> or missed any crates on it. And the whole reason I did not say that until I got past that part <laughs> was because I was not gonna jinx myself. That's right, slide me back to the middle. Okay, now that I know I can actually jump on any vehicle, I should make this a lot easier. Okay. Come on, Aku Crate. Okay, avoid the vehicle. There was a second one! Oh wait, Aku actually protected me for once? This might be it. Don't fall. Yes, go! Wait, mm, let's go! Finally! <sighs> Insanely perfect run. Oh, yeah, I forgot to yell. Wobbuffet! There, you happy, Avalon? Uh, what worked? Wait, you're not going to hit all the boxes with the death count looking like this? Negative one less death. Zero? <laughs> I didn't even read it. <laughs> Until after I beat the level. <laughs> okay, so, um. Alright, inverted mode. One of the best inverted modes I've played so far. And I find I got a three life limit. Let's go. Oh man, that level was hard. It 
It should be easier though in inverted mode. I hope. And a lot more fun. And the music should be a lot more fun too. <laughs> Let's see if these tall poppies know how to smoke a steak. Underwater level. Let's go. See, the reason I love this inverted level is that it actually changes the mechanics of the game. Unlike the other inverted levels, which is just basically a, a paint job. This one actually changes the feel of the game. Oh, and Avalon, in case you were wondering what I was talking about. Um, yeah. <laughs> this is what I was talking about. Underwater futuristic city level. So yes, it is an underwater futuristic city level in the game. How am I not drowning? It's the future, don't question it. It's also... What's cool is this also is a first for the series. Because I'm pretty sure there's never been an underwater level in Crash Bandicoot game. And before anybody says, uh, there's Crash Bandicoot 3, I'm talking about like actual platforming underwater. Because Crash Bandicoot 3 was like, not really platforming. Crash Bandicoot 3 was really like, scuba diving. And again, enjoy this underwater level thing. There's <laughs> all Bioshock in here, yeah. No! Oh wait, I didn't hit a checkpoint? I'm restarted. <laughs> There's no point of just continuing the level if I didn't hit a checkpoint. But yeah, my... Top... My top three inverted levels that I've played so far. This one, in my opinion, is probably the best one or second best one. And then the second one is the one in uh, the swamp area because it cut it's in cut time and everything's like faster. And then the other one was um. And at Wampa Island because it's like made everything nighttime and then you have like a heat, uh, motion sensor thing or what, what's it called? Heat sensor? I don't know. <laughs> Let's see if these tall poppies know how to smoke a steak. Of uh, an honorable mission, honor, uh, honorable mention to the painting one in the pirate one. Thought a painting one, like yeah, it was like cool to see the effects and stuff. Oh come on, I'm literally holding the button and you're looking right at it. <laughs> but the honorable mention to um the pirate one at the painting. But I feel like that one's still got a little bit of lackluster just because, like, all it's doing is just painting things. I don't know. It doesn't feel like it's an actual mechanic that changes the gameplay. Like, this one, you know, you feel underwater, so the platform is gonna feel different. It's gonna be a bit slower, and everything's moving a bit slower, a bit more floatier. The swamp one, you know, with it being cut time, that means like you have less time to think about things and everything was much faster. Enemies are faster, the platform is faster. Your muscle memory would not work the same. And then the uh, one in Wampa Island was, you know, like playing the nighttime levels, except a bit better instead of having to run through at the, as fast as possible because the thing would disappear. You kind of controlled it yourself. Man, 
Man, I feel like I have so much time to do everything. Like that, I, I had so much time to get that life crate right there and not hit the nitro. And a lot more time to position myself. I mean, I think it'd be more impressive to open an underwater restaurant. Because, you know, there's already restaurants in the airports all the time. But an underwater restaurant? How many of those do we have? Hmm? Hmm? Especially in today's day and age. And you're you're a dingle doll that lives in a swamp. If you why would you not make an underwater restaurant? You know what I'm saying? Oh, I almost forgot to get that crate. Oh gosh, how much harder is Tana Sex is gonna be? So now I have to calculate like the jumps and stuff for the grinding section while underwater. And then this awesome this level also messes with your depth perception too. <laughs> because you're underwater. And you know how much water messes with your depth perception. So yeah, that's why I like this inverted mode so much. Oh wait, hold on. Am I above it? I can't tell. <laughs> exactly. Depth perception completely ruined. <laughs> uh wait, which way? To the left? Yeah, okay. Absolutely could not tell at all where I was because of uh, underwater level depth perception. Which is why this is an awesome inverted level because, you know, it, it feels like a complete change to mechanics to, to what, then from what you're used to. Ooh, got the combo. I don't know why, but for some reason... Playing this inverted level just makes me want to speak slower. Should I just speak slower for the rest of this level? Just because I'm underwater and everything is moving a lot slower. Or would it take me too long to say any statements because of how slow I have to speak? I missed every one of the... Oh, my bad. I missed every one of those Bumba fruits. Checkpoint. 
Oh gosh, I'm gonna be chased by enemies in slow motion. My life is in danger. How am I still too heavy for these vehicles? I am underwater. The vehicle should not even be affected by me landing on them. He just shot through the wall. Alright, that should have deactivated the nitro bots. Now I can go back to get the two crates that I missed. Oh wait, that was about to be a poor jump. But I corrected it because I have plenty of time to react. Oh wait, I just realized I have not found the hidden gem yet. And I'm going this way for no reason. Because the hidden gem is not in the same location. is here. I hope it's spicy and fried. When you have to stretch it. Okay, Tana's body is completely warped <laughs> because of how tall she is. There a chance that the nah I don't see anything up there. Wait, does this mean it would be very easy to avoid the vehicles because they should be moving a lot slower. Ha ha wombo combo. of truth can I still jump at the right time even with my depth perception being warped I don't know why, but I felt like I could go to the right there. I'll worry about the hidden gem later, though. Back on 
on the grind. Oh no! I got tricked by the death perception. <laughs> this is my last chance. Before I'll have to restart. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my depth perception is so off. <laughs> oh, I, I can't believe I missed that twice. If, if my depth perception is so off because of the water physics. Okay, okay. Got time to go back to speaking in slow motion like I'm underwater or something. <laughs> Let's see if these tall poppies know how to smoke a steak. Man, I cannot believe I missed that crate just because of that perception of being underwater. You would think the platforms would be able to hold Dingle Dial's weight a little bit better because he is now underwater. But I guess Dingadal must be way too heavy. That even while underwater, he cannot be held up. I almost did not notice that enemy there because the ground is kind of bluish because of the water and so the enemy almost snuck attack me. No, I missed. You would think Dingadal would be a bit faster since he is part crocodile. Am I a franchise? Could I open a restaurant? In an airport? Oh my goodness, I just thought about something. 
How in the world will I be able to platform in slow motion in Cortex this section? I just feel like platforming in Cortex and then the underwater environment does not mix well. That was my sound because I am underwater. Have I died yet? No, I actually have zero deaths so far. Let's keep it that way. At least until I get to Tana section. blow up Aku. Now I don't have an extra extra hit point. Will I make it? Yes. Oh, wait a second. I was about to get on the wrong platforms. This is the one I want. Yeah. Now what are you going to do, robots? You have been tr frozen in my time-space continuum. Oh, gosh. They're still deadly, though. There's no point going in that direction. Wonder what the local delicacy is here. I hope it's spicy and fried. Is it just me or is it getting hard to breathe in here? Imagine shouting at the top of your lungs while underwater so all of the water could get in your lungs and you chuck from being underwater. <laughs> Some random person is going to be like, what is up with his voice? And then click the follow button. Ha, ah, if only. But they'll probably be just sit here and be like, what is wrong with his voice? And then leave the stream. Yeah. Or maybe they will figure it out because we are underwater and moving slowly. That I must speak slowly. Now, hopefully my depth perception is not off. Actually, what I realized is that the crates are a lot closer than you would think. So I should jump sooner than I would think. Oh, yeah. 
All right, I must remember to jump a lot sooner. Oh my goodness, that crate is impossible to hit. Finally got that one. I almost missed that one. There's a hidden gem on the left. I don't see it. Checkpoint reached. Oh, wait a second. What are the odds of the gym being on the outskirts of the platforming you can go with the vehicles? Those vehicles are still moving pretty fast even for being underwater. I was not lined up. lives to get past this section. Forget it, I have an Aku. I could just run for it. Complete. Okay, I'm 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 done talking like that. <laughs> uh, okay, 
So now I just gotta come back to this level and um find a hidden gem at some point in time. Future past Coco. The crate escape. Oh gosh, beating this level deathless is gonna be very hard. It's like cortex section. I I'm bad with platforming with cortex. <laughs> And then on top of that, like, there's that what power in the end, which I'm pretty sure I died like 40 times on. <laughs> like, I think the first time I played this level, I died 40 something times, right? Yeah. Which would make this technically the second hardest level I've played, going by my death count. But on the bright side, I do know the location of all the crates, because I did get the crate gem, so. Um, you know what I just thought about? If the, if my depth perception was seriously off on um the regular version of this level when it came to the crash section, it's gonna be horrible on the the underwater level. Oh my goodness, I don't know if I could beat this level. Yeah, this is the part that I was afraid of. I can't shoot that from here, can I? I can, okay. So then it's the, oh my goodness, how? I wasn't even holding that direction. What was that? I literally was holding forward and he just went to the right for no reason. Actually, I need to practice this part right here. Because if there's any section I'm going to be dying on a lot, it's, it's this part. And there's like a wall above, so I guess I have to use that. But on the bright side, I know I can break this crate from like over here. Yeah. Yeah, this is gonna be a hard level to get the insane perfect relic on. Considering it's my second hard uh second hardest level for me, yeah. Wait, can I I don't think I could jump that far, can I? Oh, this comes back? That makes things simple. Then again, the other option would be to jump directly on the crates. Now, because the platform takes forever to come back, so it's like, that's not going to help anyway. But yeah, that tiny section is the section I'm most worried about with Cortex. And then the whole section with Crash of Coco. Ugh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is gonna be the level that takes me the longest to get the insanely perfect. Well, sec longest or second longest to get the insanely perfect relic in. Considering that I this is the level I had the second most steps in. <laughs> oh my goodness. 
How did I get hit by that? Actually, okay, so, I don't know, the, the underwater version of this level would be a double-edged blade, because it's like, yes, everything moves slower, but at the same time, your depth perception is warped. So it could end up being easier or harder. Yeah, I need to get consistent in this section. Although I have no hope of beating this level without being consistent in this part right here. There we go. And I could just wait for the platform to come back down. I mean, come back up. Actually, I could just make the jump from here. side. <laughs> okay, yeah, I need to be careful about where I land. It is nice to know that the thing underneath this one is lined up perfectly with it, so that could help me catch... Oh, dang, I'm gonna get past this. I need to figure out the right time. Let's go. Okay. Alright, this is easy. I just need to pay attention to the cars. And how many pops by? Just one? Okay. This one is two. This one was what? Three? Was it? One, two, three, four. Okay. Just one. This next one is four. One, two, three, four. This one was two. Okay, what's this one? One. This one? Okay. Next one's one as well? Okay. Okay, so far so good. Yeah, no, I'm just gonna run. <laughs> now I gotta remember how I died here when I first played. All right, I got crushed right there, so I have to jump to the other platform. Oh my gosh. Is that really that tight of a fit? Or did I just jump too high? Actually, I probably could just fly above over. I don't even need to jump.
Yeah, I don't need to jump. Okay, so that's not as hard as I thought it would be. Actually, I'm just going to continue to level just to see what other stuff I'd need to learn. Dang, I was taken out with the trash. I completely forgot that that, that is the enemy. Oops. Wait, can I just bro? I was like, can I just blow up the TNTs on the bottom? Oh, I thought I was facing to the right. I thought I wouldn't be j jump high enough to get hit by it. I don't remember this problem being, this level being a problem. I mean, I don't remember this section being a problem for me at all. Like, I'm pretty sure I got through it in like two tries. <laughs> I don't know why I'm dying to it so much now. What did I do differently than last time? Or it could just be because I'm using Cortex, you know, I die a lot with Cortex. Oh my goodness, that thing almost got me. Now, I don't think I died on this section. I don't think there's particularly anything very challenging about this part. Yeah. That snurgles. Now it's this part that I had uh, had a lot of problems with. <laughs> But there is a chance because I beat it before, I can be really good at it now. And so I won't die a lot. Look, look at that. I'm already almost at the end. Huh. That's all of them, right? Yeah, I think so. Huh. I thought I would have died a lot more times and not got past that on my first try.
<laughs> hey, I guess though that that uh forty something deaths <laughs> really made that section super easy now. <laughs> I was dying for the future. Now watch how I'm, I'm not going to be able to get past that section. I'm not doing the insanely perfect relic run that I'm trying to do now. <laughs> All right, insanely perfect relic run. Let's do this. What are you hitting? What in the world is that hitting? The wall? <laughs> nah, I don't want that. There we go, that's better. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like I said, it's, a, it's Cortex section that I'm going to be dying about. Because, like, I'm so used to Crash and Coco's platforming in, like, literally every Crash game. That I'm so, I don't die that much with them. But when I'm using all the other three characters, I'll be dying left and right. Because it's like, their physics are slightly different. The mechanics are different. Cortex, I swear, likes to slip off of everything. Wait a second. I just realized this graffiti says Uka Uka question mark. Which is something I've literally been wondering like forever because I'm like, dude, I know they didn't just kill off Uka Uka like that. <laughs> I'm low key kind of upset he didn't come back as the final boss. Or maybe he might come back if I beat the game 100%. Who knows? I hope he comes back. It makes no sense for Uka not to come back. If he was able to open a portal through uh, dimensions, he should be able to come back. <laughs> I jumped right into the nitro crate. I was like, I'm just gonna hold to the left because I know it's a safe spot all the way to the left. Okay, let's go.
just gonna wait for it to show four. So I, I counted three, but I guess I missed one. No! Ah, uh, man, that's the one time I don't make it. <laughs> but I literally make it every other time. Uh, it must have been like half, not even like half a second. Like I legit touched the edge of it and just fell. Like I was barely like maybe a frame late. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wonder if I should just stop bouncing off the crates because. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like bouncing off the crates is more consistent in breaking them than shooting them. Come on, how's that? Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, just gotta wait for the platform. Thank you. Oh, oh my goodness. I swear I was holding to the right. <laughs> and for no reason, I my right input did not get red and I went straight. Like it, my right input got red for like half a second. I may have like it slightly let go of right or something, but I I swear I, I thought I was holding to the right. But like I said, it's cor cortex section, man. <laughs> I am so bad at fusing cortex. Make it. No! Oh my goodness. That I must have jumped just slightly too late on the platform that fell, so it lowered my jump height. I thought I had it too. But it all it I was screwed over from the moment I accidentally dashed slightly to the right. <laughs> yeah, that that section right there is like literally the hardest section in the whole level. <laughs> you make one tiny mistake and you die. Because you had to get through that whole section without making a mistake. 
literally every other part and every other section in the level get, um, does not punish you that hard from a mistake. <laughs> but that section, yeah, you, you cannot make a mistake. To jump up there? Hmm. Something I need to try out later. Because I felt like I got stuck on the ledge for a second, and there's a chance I probably could actually jump up there. Tell me ever like playing as Cortex's Crash Bash and original CTR. Fun fact, I think Cortex is actually the first character I used to beat a Crash Bandicoot game, which is CTR. That's the first Crash game I beat. Oh, you know, I just now realize this is a hotel and this is b baggage that's being carried across. Oh my gosh, this entire time I thought these was like cars or something. And I kept wondering like, why do I keep hearing a bell? <laughs> and it just now occurred to me like, oh, this is a hotel. Wow, I cannot believe it took me to this long to realize that. Oh gosh, it's 11? Already? Oh, I forgot those two. Yeah, it's one from everyone onwards from here. Is it 11 p.m. already? Well, you see, Crash Bandicoot is a very intense game. And time flies when you're having fun. Oh gosh. Uh -huh, I pressed it too soon. Uh, I'm gonna laugh if I legit just die so many times on Cortex section, and when I get to Crash section, I literally beat it. In one try, <laughs> then I would I, I would think it would be the other way around because I'm pretty sure I died more on Crash the section the first time I played the game. <laughs> but like I legit just beat it in one try when I was practicing the level just to make sure I got uh, everything. <laughs> so I was like, wow, I really died on the level that many times. I got so good with Crash section. <laughs> The muscle memory is still there. Ah. 
I can jump up here. Interesting. Then let's... Oh. Makes me wonder if that leads to a hidden gem. It would be a nice location to hide it. At least I'm starting to get consistent at that section. No. I'm not consistent at this section, but if I mess up, I don't die unless I fall wrong. I need to get a better jump time. That vehicle, t I mean, that, um, cart took a while. I said, what is the thing called that carries luggage? Is it called a cart? You ate three boxes of good... How could you have eaten three boxes of gushers? How could you think that was okay to do? That's way too much sugar for your body. Ow. You basically just poisoned your body by doing that. No! I was so close. I was so close. Uh, I was so close. I was three crates away. I think three crates. Uh, 
Wow, if I actually beat this in a low amount of attempts, that would be very surprising. Because this is quite literally the second hardest level for me to beat. And for me to beat it so quickly and with the insane perfect relic, that would... <laughs> that would be very surprising. It could also be the fact that since it is the second hardest level for me, and I've died so many times, that I've gotten so good. I have. Got, I've gotten so many repetitions that I've gotten so good at the level that I won't have to play it as many times. So that could also be the part of the reason. <laughs> so I guess it wouldn't it be completely bad that I this was the second hardest level for me. My stream distracted you, and that's why you ate like fifty, um, more than your weight in gushers. <laughs> okay, now I believe you. You three. Boxes. How could you have eaten three boxes? Well, how could you not have stopped after one box? <laughs> Man, that crate is stubborn. the wrong time. Okay, there we go. So yeah, the, re the reason they delayed the last one is because it's supposed to get you to think that there's no cards that's going to come by on that last one and it, get it gets you for the cheap shot. That's the only reason that last one is so super delayed. <laughs> Luckily, I know better than to believe what I can see. Yeah, I shot that way too high. Can I make it still? Nope. How did I forget to shoot the enemy in the middle? You like fruit candy. Oh, fuck. <laughs> and you didn't notice you. <laughs> Even so, I would notice it when I'm eating something, though. <laughs> but then again, I, I, I don't eat more than I use. That's usually necessary, so. <laughs> oh, gosh. No, I just realized these vehicles probably could hit me. And I've somehow never been hit by one yet. That snurgles? I 
Oh, that was close. Almost died, but I recovered. Let's go! I cannot believe that this actually took me so few attempts to get the insanely perfect relic. When this was literally the second hardest level for me. I cannot believe that. Wow. I've really died so many times that this level is easy now. <laughs> I cannot believe that. That is crazy. Hmm. Wait, I just I realized this cutscene is pre-rendered. Because otherwise they would have been wearing the costumes like the other cutscenes. Okay, now the final question is, how badly will I get destroyed by the inverted version of this level? Because <laughs> of change in physics. Your heart is green. <laughs> oh man. But the change of physics and the depth perception is probably going to mess me up, especially in the Crash and Coco section. Ugh. But then again, oh wait, and you're gonna be jumping slower? Oh my god, I don't know if I can beat that. Set. I mean, I'm pretty sure I can beat it, but it's gonna be tough. Yeah, cause you... Oh man, this is gonna be a hard level. I already know this is gonna be a hard level. Cause you're, you jump slower. I mean, Cortex section probably is gonna be fine. Actually, can I jump up to any of these? No. Yeah, my perception, that depth perception is going to be off. I think part of the reason I died so many times on that level, um, the first time was because my depth perception was just off. But this is gonna definitely move my depth perception, so who knows how many times I could die. Yeah, what I find suspicious is that you can walk up here. Aha! I don't know if I would have found that if I didn't accidentally land on that crate earlier and then realize I could jump on si top of that thing. Oh my goodness, it's so bright over here. It's so bright. My eyes. Oh, okay, my eyes are finally adjusted. That's a tongue. Oh, that looked like a green. I mean, I look like a heart for some reason. <laughs> Actually, this may not be as hard as I thought since I'm moving so slow and got plenty of time to react to what I'm doing. It's funny, the underwater might actually have made the levels easier. Since it's like basically playing in slow motion, which gives you plenty of time to think about what you're doing and to line yourself up so you don't fall off and die. The only problem is your depth perception, which might be harder to deal with in Crash and Coco section. Oh gosh. Wait, no. Okay. But why am I worrying so much about dying? It's not like I have to get the insanely perfect relic. I already got it.
At least the same amount of carts. No, I accidentally blew up the... No. No. Wait, there's still a... No, I can't shoot it from that far, can Wait. There's a chance I might be able to still shoot it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> there we go. Let's go, I got it. That's funny, Cortex actually got to the Cortex actually makes sense underwater. Cause he got this thing that's like swimming. Cortex actually makes sense underwater. He does not make sense in a regular game because he's built for underwater gameplay. <laughs> I mean, look how far I've gotten without dying. Because he basically has a swimming attack. This is swimming. Cortex makes so much more sense underwater. It's crazy. <laughs> now the only thing I, I'm afraid of is I might get smacked by a random one dropping the platform thing. Yo, let's go. Got through Cortex entire section on the first try and one attempt. Oh, now this part. Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. I'm dying here. My depth perception is so off. Oh, gosh. What is going on? <laughs> okay. Oh, man. Oh, I, I, I thought I was far enough. I can barely make these jumps. Oh, I, this is probably where I'm going to lose my lives. Oh, gosh. Oh, I got hit by it again. Oh, my goodness. I tell you, 
This is the part I feared because my depth perception would be completely thrown off because of the water. Yeah. I need to practice getting around this one though. Alright. Yeah. I'm about to restart after this. I don't think I could get in this next one. take a miracle for me to actually be able to beat this. I have to wait for that one to blow up. Uh. that in less than in only three deaths I actually got all the gems I'm just got to take a second right but just to take a breather Is your favorite Pokemon Wobble Fit? Nah, you did you did it right. You gotta do it like you're underwater. You gotta be like Wobble <laughs> That's what you gotta do, like you're underwater. <laughs> okay, well that new skin for your crash. Ooh. Really the wombat. Wait, this is what Crash was was supposed to originally be? Cause yeah, Crash was supposed to be really the Wombat. Be, that's what he was originally supposed to be. Okay. Uh, I still gotta find a hidden gem on two of those two underwater levels. But I really don't feel like looking for hidden gems right now. I just feel like playing and just be getting the insanely perfect relics. So nitro processing. Okay, I can. I just gotta go for the insanely perfect relic. Cause I got the uh, every other gem. I just have to not die. I just have to not die. Super Saiyan Goku and Naruto. Super Saiyan Crash. Almost died just like that. Wait, there's nothing back here. What am I looking for? Listen up, lackeys. There's an imposter me on the loose. I love the music for um this last couple of levels though. That kills you? Really? <laughs> that wasn't even the the, the spinning blade part. That was quite literally just a metal bar and it should not have been able to kill me. Man, there's choice. There's choices, but things, hitboxes that could kill you just sometimes like, what? I don't understand why that could kill you. I usually don't skip to some of the scenes, but <laughs> the cutscene is very long for that one, so it's like. Identical in appearance. lips like two overripe bananas. Skin like a rat. A ten.
but of dying a lot has caused me to get better. Then does that mean I actually will beat the last couple of levels faster? That would be a kind of crazy. Now, but the last level, the last, the very final level is way too hard for that to happen. Thank you for automatically taking a mask away from me before I even got done with the section. <laughs> like, I was not about trying to go down and fall into that, but the stupid mask just disappeared while I was still upside down. <laughs> that that shouldn't disappear until you, there's no more platform that you can stand upside down on. <laughs> I don't know why it disappeared right there. I literally got killed because of it. The thing disappearing and making me go back to regular gravity. Listen up, lackeys. There's an imposter me on the loose. Identical in appearance. Beady eyes. Lips like two overripe bananas. Skin like a jaundiced mole rat, a bona fide head. Now, I really hope I'm not missing any crates. <laughs> I mean, I do know where all the crates are because I did get the gem before. But there is a chance that I may have forgotten since the last time I was at this level. I'm gonna wait back here because I don't want the mask to automatically disappear on me again. Oh, I did not know they were gonna start moving.
Your phone's at 2%. Hell yeah, you need to go get that charge now. But yeah, you know the last couple of levels in this game are... My slide attack didn't come out. You know the last couple of levels in this game is hard when they just give you a ton of free lives. <laughs> Cause they're like, well, you're probably gonna be dying like 20 times. So here's a bunch of free lives. Wait, my bad. I I'm saying my death count. The average player probably gonna be dying more than 50 times. <laughs> so here's a bunch of lives. Except for, wait, so if I die 50 times on the final level, how many times does someone die on the final level that's, you know, not good at Crash Bandicoot? Ah, I barely got clipped by the wall. Hey, I'm gonna have to put my iPad on the charger too. Listen up, lackeys. There's an imposter me on the loose. Identical in appearance. Beady eyes. Lips like two overripe bananas. Skin like a jaundiced mole rat. A bonafide head. Oh my goodness, I really hate that you can die when you flip gravity. <laughs> that the kill plane is like still there so and, and you just... Well actually no, there it makes sense because it's gears. But like some of the earlier levels when there's literally nothing at the top that could kill you, you just fall and die even though you fl clearly flip gravity which makes no sense. Wow. 
I was trying to do a belly flop, but I accidentally landed on top of the iron crate, and so I ended up sliding. stuck on the platform and it pushed me up and I got killed oh my goodness I'm getting killed by so many things that I've never got killed well I did not get killed for before I'm just got to crouch on there then just to make sure I don't accidentally get pushed up and then make sure I'm dead center do with the 2k whopper food you have I honestly don't know I probably just need to make rewards for it but I don't know what rewards I could give Just uh, the gear mechanics. The gear is like work so weird, and then you get stuck on them, and then you can't move, and yeah. I don't know. Well, Avalon, you don't know. You got like two thousand. You wanna know how many I have? It actually says infinity. They're like, I kid you not, this an infinity symbol. I don't know, I gotta think about what viewer rewards to give. Thing is, I never really thought about any because, like, I don't get a lot of viewers because I'm not a big Twitch. Why does that kill you? Why does the middle of nothing kill you? <laughs> Just like the time where the checkpoint kills you. I don't know, the other thing I could think of, like, maybe playing against me in, like, a game or something, like, Crash Team Racer or something, but then it's like, you don't have those games. I don't know, there's a lot of things I need to do with my Twitch channel, like, I need to get emotes and stuff. But I just have not been inspired to do it. Cause I don't have a lot of um, viewership and stuff. Most of my views that I ever get for anything is like mostly on YouTube. Like even when I was live streaming Smash Bros the other day for St. Patrick's Day. My Twitch streams only had like two, three viewers, but then like the YouTube one got a, that the YouTube stream got like way more. Oh, 
Oh, that was close. Okay, am I finally getting past the gears now? Because I've been stuck on these gears for like ever now. These rats move. Okay. Oh, now there's the cute electric things. Oh yeah, then I remember on this part, my perception is, that perception is super off. So I'm gonna go way farther than I think I need. Ah, oh, I should have waited, I should have waited. Is that because it's your channel or because you're technically here for the stream so you get an infinity symbol? No, what happened was I've watched so much, so many of my live streams that I broke the counter and it's now at infinity. Now is it? Yeah, it's because it's my live stream, so I just have infinity. Just like I'm permanently subscribed to myself. Like if I were to type something in the chat, you would see that I have a subscriber badge. Identical in appearance. Beady eyes, lips like two overripe bananas, skin like a jaundiced mole rat, a bonafide head. Huh, I'm surprised that didn't burn me. Let me not stand on top of that, because that is instant death. I'm afraid of where the hidden gem in the... In the Inverted mode could be. Wait and destroy it.
that all of them? Yeah, that should be all of them. Oh, I almost missed that. No! Ah, I got the golden Aku now. This means as long as I don't fall, I have a higher chance of survival. Oh, I did not know those exploded. I've never seen them explode before. They've always just rolled past me. Just gonna ignore all the enemies here. They're just setups for me to die if I try to fight them. Let's go! Invincibility! What? What? That kills you even when you're invincible? What? Is Akko even useful in this game at all? Like he protects you from nothing! Akko is literally useless in this game! Like, there's so many times I needed Aku to protect me, and he does not. He is so useless in this game for some reason. Why in the world can he not protect me from a simple spike machine? <laughs> He's protecting me from a, a car moving at a kajillion miles per hour, but you tell me a, a barely moving spike machine, he can't protect me from that. I get insta-killed from that. Okay. Is that... I'm so mad I just got killed by that. Like, I I was like, oh, I'm invincible. I'm fine. Nope. Listen up, lackeys. There's an imposter. I cannot believe. That Aku really cannot did not protect me from that. That's that's so messed up. Like Aku legit is almost useless in this game. But the regular enemies barely ever hit me, and so like the one time I get Aku, I'm like, oh yeah, that, that, I'm about to go invincible mode. Useless does nothing. Aku's just a placebo. Aku does not exist. Listen up, lackeys. There's an imposter me on the loose. Identical in appearance. Beady eyes. Lips like two overripe bananas. Skin like a strongest mole rat. A bona fide ten.
Wait, is there a crate back there? I don't think so, right? Nah, it's just these rats. Dang it, my jump didn't come out. Have I perfected the spin speed dash yet? I don't know, I think I have. Unless there's a faster way to do it, but it just told me it's just a triple spin. <laughs> and yeah, I've been spinning three times and going faster. I don't know if there's a secret fourth spin or something. But yeah, as far as I know, I perfected it. I'm so upset that Aku did not protect me. I was invincible and I died. Listen up, lackeys. There's an imposter of me on the loose. Identical in appearance. Beady eyes, lips like two overripe bananas, skin like a jaundiced mole rat, a bona fide tail. What? Uh, man. You know, it's the triple spin. Well, yeah, you do have to perfectly time the triple spin because if you just mash it, it won't work.